Booty butt cheeks, booty, booty butt cheeks. Come on. Mm. 
Fuck that. Let's get into it. song on repeat cause you seem to forget how much you are hurting me do what's right you say you will but then you don't you just don't you don't care cause you don't take me seriously what's there to repair if you don't want to talk to me you should know your time is up i'm out i'm done so i put you on a lifetime sentence and you'll no longer feel my presence so we thought i would let this be thought you knew me so much better you're on a lifetime sentence so now you never feel my presence so we thought I would let this be. Thought you knew me so much better. <laughs> so we thought I would let this be. Thought you knew me so much better. Yeah, yeah. So we thought I would oh, let this be. Ho! A lot of little incense up in his mug. Come on, thing. What's going on here? Thought you knew me so much better. There's a reason these two guys win. Thought you knew her so much better. Well, these two guys know her. And that's why they win and you lose all the time. Bring your tissues. Cause it ain't gonna change. And newsflash, I'm not just talking about black women. I'm talking about all women. All women love these two guys. Oh, and make no mistake, they don't grow out of it. So all you dudes who are about to be butt hurt and think, well, that's just until you know they grow up and then all of a sudden you know when they come to their senses then they'll choose me <laughs> no 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 nope see i'm about to hurt your feelings because you need to know Women love these two guys. Always have, always will. And there's a reason that they love these two guys. And your choices are simple. Either deal with it or do better. Let's start off with the top. Before we get into it, let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and be polite. It's raining up here. Shout out to the CIA. 
One love, FBI. What's going on? Shout out to my homie there in Virginia. Just connected with a brother out in Virginia. Looks to have a very nice tailoring haberdashery business. Your boy, your big bro is going to... It's gonna get good. It's, it's gonna get good. I love working with small. I love working with uh I love working with independents versus big brands because put that money in their pocket. But anyway, let's get into it. 89 people watching, 27 people hit the damn like button. Y'all are not already ran up in here to see what I'm gonna talk about. I'm not talking about nothing until we get to at least 60 likes. So shout out raining one. What's going on? King J, what's going on? Albert. The two videos that we'll be dropping today are how to make a woman crave you, how to become her obsession, how to take her, how to get in her very soul, get your Mortal Kombat Shang Tsung on. There's a very, there's a, you know, there's a technique to what I do. Um, and it works. It works. It's ironclad. Getting a woman to crave you, to be obsessed with you, to just be on her mind all day, all night, to where just the thought of you, and she can't, she can't even help herself. Her, her hand just slips in, uh, in the thigh, and she closes her eyes and bites that lip and just, see, a lot of you cats never had that. Don't worry, your big bro gonna help you. But get the likes up. Get the likes up. I'm going to tell you right now, there are going to be some guys who are going to be upset. But I'm going to tell you, I don't care. I don't care because my job is to tell you the truth. Um, I'm on YouTube to grow my business. And I grow my business best when I tell guys the truth and let them deal with it. There are two types of guys, women, absolutely love they go crazy over them they <laughs> and this is the only real battle this is the battle at the top of the battles throughout any time in history throughout any culture throughout any race you're going to see that at the top you're going to see women love these two guys the first one oh we got to still get the likes up we got to go i can't go mm -mm. oh it's smelling good i got i'm got a uh, i got my incense burning right now this incense right here it's from house of matriarch it's called devotion ah uh, middle eastern frankincense myrrh uh on this nice cold day and right now i'm actually rocking my YSL Saint Laurent tuxedo. Ooh, -wee. I've been killing them all day. I didn't get a chance to really bust out my um my 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 Maxwell Smart camera. That's a camera. That's a camera recorder. It fits right here. I have a chance to bust it out because it's been too rainy all day, so I shot videos. Got a candle going. How often do y'all burn candles, gentlemen? How often do you just set your own damn mood? How often do you just get your flex on? A lot of you dudes, man, is y'all, y'all, y'all need to you need to listen to your big bro. You need to say you need to get your own mode together. That's why I say on Suit Saturday, that's the day to get your own mode, to put your grown damn man on. If you look good, smell good, get out and roll around like a damn man. All right. You can see the hate. Look at guys, look, look what's happening right here. Look at look at the dislikes. You see the guys who are the dislikes? Them are those avatar butt hurt dudes. The dudes who are anti self improvement. The dudes that just want them to. I want her to like me because I'm a good dude. She does. She dislikes you third. She does like you. Black, white, Asian, Hispanic, and other. They do like you. You're just number three and a distant third. And a, most of you are that way because you, anyway, let's get into it. Keep them going. I hope to get the dislikes up to double digits because that just is a greater indication 
of how many guys out there just hate to hear the truth. I have not even said a word yet, and there are eight people who've already disliked it. Can't be because I said anything wrong. I've got on the camera, looking good, smelling good, talking about the same thing, but the subject matter hurts the feelings of some guys so much to where I even got to ask you, why are you on this channel? Don't hit dislike, just don't come. Unsubscribe, because it's not gonna get any easier. We're in second level, it's gonna only get harder. Playtime is over. So let's get number one. Number one, the number one guy that all women love, all women, everywhere, no respecter of class, no respecter of any of that shit, is the bad boy. That's right, is the bad boy. In the black community, you want to call him Pookie and Ray Ray. That's what the bad boy would fall in that category. On the other side, it would be, you know, it would be, it would be Brad or Chad, pick one. It would be the guy in the leather jacket and the motorcycle with the tattoos. The bad boy. The bad boy is always a, a archetype. We're talking about archetypes. Women love the bad boy archetype because he represents rebellion. He represents actually pushing against the father and her and the men in her family's control. A father is going to raise his girl up to be nice, prim, proper, respected. He wants somebody to be right for his little princess. And she's going to think about the dude that just talks to her the way she needs to be talked to and 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 screwed the way she needs to be screwed. Shout out to Alan Roger Curry when he talked about I met this judge one time from this upper bourgeoisie family and couldn't figure out why his daughter loved this street dude. Hey man, he said he fucks he fucks me the way I need to be. You can't like it or not. This is at the crux of the Pookie Ray Ray argument because women love bad boys. Women love bad boys. I could give you all the psychological reasons, but that's just the truth. The rebellion, the danger, all of it. And here's the thing. You can lie to yourself and think that that changes some point in life. It doesn't. It doesn't. They just stop talking about it as much. There's never a place where women get to like, well, I went through my bad boy phase and now I want Mr. Rogers. No, that's shit that they tell you guys. They tell you that so you won't feel guilty and won't feel inadequate trying to measure up to the dude she's really thinking about while you on top of her doing the best you can. Shut the front door. That is the truth. The unvarnished truth. They tell you that you're acceptable while she's thinking about the guy she really want while you laying on top of her doing the best you can. But you get that missionary position. You get, you know, the transactional, you know, kind of stuff. And I talked about a video today to how to fix this shit. Because everybody can't be a bad boy. Everybody can't be a bad boy because you don't want to you don't want to take penitentiary chances. You don't want to you don't you are too law and order. And I'm not judging. See, this is amoral and pragmatic. I don't care if you like it. Everybody can't be the bad boy. You don't want to take those risks. And that's cool. The bad boy is always going to be one of the top. Bad boy. Think about even back when we had the quintessential All-American show, Happy Days. Who was the most successful character on there? Fonz. Hey. Even in that idyllic, lily white washed America, Richie Potsy, the Cunninghams, Joni Chachi, you know, all American Al's Burger Shop and Bebop and Poodle Skirts and all that. Who comes up? The leather jacket wearing, motorcycle riding, knock on the door, jukebox work, looks at a girl, come up. I mean, just go back and look at 1970s and look at how look at how cool, how much of a dom game Fonzie was running. 
Fonzie was running a dumb game in the 70s. Fonz was the shit. Bad boy. That character existed because they knew women would gravitate towards. And here's the thing. Of the nine of you guys who hit dislike, here's what you here's the problem. Here's what it here's why you hit dislike. Because you like them too. You like them too because they do the shit that you don't have balls enough to do. Oh, oh, watch the dislikes go up. Watch it again. You like the bad boys too because they have the balls to do shit that you don't have that you don't have the balls to do. You wish you could be like them. You wish you could stand up and say, man, fuck you. We're not gonna take it. You wish you could do it, but you just can't. You know, people will disapprove of me. And look, I'm not just see, look, it jumped again. See? Watch, look. Look, it keeps going. I don't want to be like him. I don't want to be a bad boy. I like being Captain America in the Boy Scout because Captain America always wins. No, he doesn't. That's some shit they put on movies to sell you goobers a ticket. Like it or not, bad boys are an archetype for all women. And it's not just black women, all women. You know what happens? The teenage bad boy is different than the 20-something bad boy is different than 30-something, 40-something, 50-something. But the bad boy stays the bad boy. Johnny Depp's character, that bad boy. You, you can become a corporate, a, a corporate raider, a pirate. See, that bad boy can go from high school to Wall Street. And he still has that killer instinct, that shark thing. And he eats up, bam, and women love him. Now, here's the thing. Somebody had to say it. I'm going to tell you, that's what it is. But there's another guy that women love. Again, it's an archetype. And they love this guy just as universally. Even the women that say they don't. And this guy is going to be the more controversial of the ones because this is the guy women actually say they don't dig as much as they really do. They'll come out of their mouth and say, oh, I don't like guys like that. See, the, the, most women will agree out front, yeah, I like bad boys because we know it's more socially acceptable. But this other guy, they'll come out and they're like, I, I mean, you know, some women like him, but I don't like him as much. You know, I, I, I like my guy a different one. And you know what that one is? It's the pretty boy. Yup, the pretty boy. The bad boy and the pretty boy. Now, when I say pretty boy, I'm not talking about delicate features, fingernails. Get that shit out of your head. I'm talking about what somebody, some people call the jawline. Jeremy Meeks. Remember that dude, the guy who had the, the the went from the mug shot to being a kept man. The jawline with the eyes, the pretty boy, pretty boys. There will be women who be like, I don't like a guy that's that. I don't like a guy that's pretty. I like a guy that's rugged face. And there'll even be guys who are like, man, get bullshit. And I love it. And see, and this is one that guys didn't have a problem with because. Most men will accept the bad boy because he's a, he's masculine and he, you know, when you say pretty boy, it pisses a lot of rock face niggas off because a lot of rock face dudes off because they can't be the pretty boy. Because a pretty boy is a face guy. Don Draper, Brad Pitt, Leonardo DiCaprio. See, a lot of times they'll try to paint the pretty boy as some kind of effeminate weakling and that ain't it. Not even by a long shot. That's what a lot of dudes who really hate on this dude, this archetype, try to paint him as. And that's cool. He's still going to fuck your bitch. Because women like bad boys and pretty boys. Let me give you an example in the black community. How many of you guys went to college? If you went to college, type me in the chat room. Type me in the chat room. 
Me, if you went to college, type me. Me, 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 I got to give all five, but the one when I went to school, it was the alphas, the sigmas, the iotas weren't on our yard, but let's mention them. But then there was a, there was the kappa and the q's. There was the noops and the q's. I'm a noop. I'm a kappa. The smallest chapters on any yard were always the kappas and the q's. We were diametrically opposed. The q's were the big muscle bound, you know. Uh, uh, Green Mile, Michael Clark Duncan looking Dean Rose. Gonna get some cornbread. You know, the big old swole up dude. Mm. Walk around with the big old mega brand on. Walking with the gold boots and they are. Sweating and shit. With the Boone's Farm sweat going everywhere, Jerry Curl juice, looking like a bunch of full force motherfuckers. You look so good. Jumping and sweating, barking at bitches. Hell you know, oh yeah, and just scaring the pussy away. The Q's got much play on the yard. Because there was a big old swole up there. They played middle linebacker. They even played positions that weren't even out there. The Q's were so big and bad, even the thug dudes were like, don't fuck with them. That's what they were. But then you know who, who will come in? Who will come in? It would be the it would be the noops. The noops will come in and they'd be like, ah oh, man, oh, I don't like them uh yo pretty boys. That's what would happen, man. The cues would go from atomic dog and all this shit, and then we would roll up in there. And women would just go, oh, the noobs, oh, they so sweet. We would come in there with the, the, the suspenders and the bow tie, rose, pull out that cane and just start on that smoothed out with the R and B tip. And the cues would be over there sweating and shit, looking like you know, slaves at noonday. And we just, yeah, roses are red, violets are blue. And as anything, but you know what? There was mad respect between the cues and the noops. Always. Everywhere I went, mad respect. Every cue I ever met. What's up, noop? And noops only call each other noops. <laughs> and let me tell you something. You know what the respect was? Rodney. You said Rodney. <laughs> There's a cue named Rodney. He's like, you know what? I don't like them other motherfuckers. I don't like them sigmas. I don't like the I, them them alphas and they know iota's like, but I always have respect for you noobs. He's like, we come through and we gorilla the pussy. We come in and we just come in, we're gonna bark and take it and gorilla it. You cool, but you motherfuckers come in smooth with that shit. But y'all lay them down just like we do. Cause you are both predators. Look, man. The pretty boy and the bad boy are always on top. Somebody tell me I'm lying. Oh man, I, we didn't shimmy. And I don't, I, that shimmy shit ain't my generation. We actually, I used to, you know, cane. I'm going to tell you, man, I have twirled my cane into more. <laughs> Look here, man. Shout out to Ron Wills. He talks about. You can get a blowjob off some shoes, man. I'm gonna tell you, I have got on a. St I've done more step shows that smooth shit. Man, bitches just throw it. It was the closest to being a damn rock star. Pretty boy, bad boy. You know what? Even when I was at school, I saw this play out because dudes would hate on the cues. Because they were bad boys, but they still got their books done. You know, a lot of the cues that went, went to school were the medical doctors now. And a lot of noobs I know are like in finance. 
the bad boy and the pretty boy. And no matter if it's on the yard or in the hood or in the suburbs or in Chinatown or Vatoville or, you know, wherever the fuck, it's always the same. The bad boy and the pretty boy. It never changes. They're always at the top. So this whole select, non-select kind of shit, look here, man. Most guys, guys need to, if you red pill, you need to understand something. Shout out to the late, late, late great Patrice O'Neill. It's always your fault. And you weren't her first pick. We are old enough. We family. We family. We're not back in our young days. I mean, maybe Clinksdale no, it's Clinks, Clinks and all that. Maybe, maybe they're still young enough. They can still go find one. But most of us, we're not back that far in our history, in our in our journey to where you can actually be the one to love the imprint. So you got to become the upgrade. So you need to damn sure watch the video I'm dropping talking about how to how to make her crave you, be obsessed with you. See, if you understand the whole classic man versus the Pookie and Ray Ray argument, this is the, the great battle. The pretty boy versus the bad boy. Because what do the pretty boy and the bad boy have in common? They're assholes. They're both assholes. The pretty boy is the smooth asshole. The bad boy is the real asshole or more authentic, hardcore, however you want to put it, unvarnished, unedited. See, I could never be a bad boy. But I was born to be a pretty boy. That smooth asshole shit. And you can learn how to be an asshole too. So you can't get even with your past. Can't do that. But you can make sure your future is bright and understand something. That for women, they love these two dudes. And if you're not one of these two dudes, understand something. Whether she likes bad boys or pretty boys, that's up to her. She probably likes them both. They're one and two, respectively, with all women. And then the other guys come third. So I use uh use sex since we're talking about it. If you've never, if you if you've never had a woman get down on her knees and service you, if it's always been you sitting on the couch or laying in the bed, if she's never submitted to you like that, if you've only had missionary transactionary sex to where you got to take out the dinner and then you get something, if, <laughs> I don't want to give all the good shit out of the video away. But women, when they when they crave you, when they're obsessed with you, when they look, dude, it's a different life. And see, you guys can miss me with this bullshit saying, why do we always have to talk about this in the black community? It ain't black. I've been in many a country club, many a boardroom on a yacht, in chamber of commerce meetings, in a rotary club, and men talk about the same thing everywhere. We just do it with, a, with our different flair here. There's barbershop talk everywhere. And nowhere on planet Earth have I been to where pretty boy and bad boy were number one and two. Number three is everything else. Now, can you level up from there? You you damn sure can, but that's, a, that's what you need to watch the video I'm dropping for. Because here's the thing. You can say what the hell you want. But why are we always talking about women? Why women? Because women are the way we keep score, fighting and fucking. I don't see a lot of you dudes are disingenuous on YouTube. You always want to talk about why do we talk? Why does it always come down to women? <laughs> if you were as successful as you said you were, you wouldn't be on this motherfucker anyway. Did I say that out loud? Erase that. Erase that. Cut that. Cut that. Cut that. I didn't mean that. Yeah, I did. If you was really as successful as you were and making all the money and doing all sort of shit, you would not be on these YouTube streets and these YouTube chat rooms doing this YouTube shit. Unless you was like me and running a YouTube business. It's disingenuous. 
You, a lot of guys are on here because there's something missing. And we got to get real about it. We got to get real about it. And the whole thing, we don't want it to come down to the, to the women and sex because you can't control it. Because women and sex have been the source of rejection and pain for so many of you guys because you've never actually done the work to figure it out. See, a lot of us can actually go to school and say, I want to make a better grade. We can, we can into the real world and go build and all this other kind of stuff. But it's the conquering of that, that woman is the conquest that is before all men. It's the rite of passage. And see, because so many of us didn't have fathers, strong fathers growing up, we, we think it's not that important. How are you going to come from a single mother? like How are you going to come, ask yourself, coming from a single mother like most of us? And if you've never got this information in the game, how are you going to talk to the guys who've already done it and say how important it is? You can't be no incel, MGTOW, you know, near incel, you know, got a trick dude to get some quality ass and tell me anything about this shit. None of it. You can't tell me anything unless you've been where I've been. Now, see, the, anyway, get back in. Back in. <laughs> pump the brakes, pump the brakes, pump the brakes. Bad boy, pretty boy. Women just come with the package. They can decide to have one and be with them for the rest of their lives or be a ladies' man all their lives. But it's their choice. And you know good and damn well, I don't know any man, I've never met a man who had who had access to the quantity and quality of woman he could want, and he chose not to have any of them. So it's easy to disdain the things you cannot have. Well, I don't really want to talk to those dudes. I'm only dealing with 80% of men out here. That 30% who are ready to buy, understand self-improvement, that journey, and just looking for the right, look, looking for the right teacher. And they're like, I, I, this is what I've been looking for. And then that 50% of guys who can actually be persuaded, like, you know what? I I I I didn't know that was like that. Oh, okay, I, I knew something was wrong, but I didn't quite get it. But now that I see, yeah, but that that diehard 20%. Who think they're dangerous because they're so anti what you can plainly see in your face? Who want to debate all day and argue and shit about? No. How about it? Knock yourself out. Because this is a constant. Bad boys, pretty boys. Bad boys, pretty boys. And here's the thing. The pretty boys and the bad boys don't really have beef. We, we, we crack on each other. We laugh at each other. But at the end of the day, there's respect because we both know what it is. Now, see, understand something. I'm not defining what pretty boy is. And I'm not defining what bad boy is. But you know it. You know it when you see it, just like women do. Which, now the question is, where do you want to fall at in the hierarchy of the ranking? This is where self-improvement becomes so important. Because you don't have the stomach to be the bad boy. And you may not have had the looks to be the pretty boy. Well, that's where self-improvement comes in. You can move up the ranking, move up the hierarchy, and get, get whatever it is out there you want. If you want something on a higher shelf, you're going to have to go to a higher level. If you want something on a lower shelf, stay in this kind of range. That's what you do. All right, let's go ahead. Let's see what's in the chat room. <laughs> He's Victor Scott said, I've been called a pretty boy a few times. I was called an a-hole today. Yeah, man, be a smooth asshole. Look here, man. And that's a journey. You got to learn how to be a smooth asshole. A smooth asshole is, where's that video? Okay. So the video I dropped today was how to make her uh Leave her wanting. How to make a woman crave you or become obsessed with you. Uh, I did something else. I forgot. Uh, but I'm going to tell you the other video. Let me see. About the asshole thing. 
The asshole thing is, oh, so you want to be select. See, when you're when you're when you're a smooth asshole, you can make a woman shut up and like it. Let me say that again. You can make a woman shut up and like it. There are women who watch these channels, may even be on this channel right now, who can't stand a lot of the shit that I say. But like, who is this cocky, arrogant? Well, uh, you, I don't agree with that. Or, or when I say some things, but you know what? They're still here. If you've ever told, if you've ever actually been with a woman who has that sassy kind of attitude or whatever, and you can shut her down with that smooth asshole by just saying, well, "Shut up, bitch." But say it in a way to where you ain't like Patrice O'Neill. How you call every woman a bitch? Shut up, bitch. Bitch, chill out. Where she's like, you call me a bitch. But then they shut the fuck up and like it. The work, women despise noodle back weak dudes. And the pretty boy and the bad boy know something. And they let women know it also that they are up here. I know women talk about, you know, I'm the prize and all that other kind of stuff. And I've even had women on this channel talking about they're the prize. I let them say whatever the hell they want to. Because I know the truth. I'm here. I'm up here. Because at the end of the day, if there's a knock on the door or if there's a bear outside, I got to go kill this shit. You can say blah, 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 all the fuck you want to. I am woman, hear me roar. When there's, when there's a bump in the house, I got to go do it. If some shit fall up, if, if some shit fall apart here, and you on my team, I gotta take care of it. And I'm gonna tell you, one of the chicks that I'm dating is a rabid, rabid feminist. <laughs> but she's that way out there. Not around me, she ain't. Look, think of George Carville and Marley Matlin. See, y'all paying too much attention to what the fuck women say. Man, talk shows on mute. Shut the, shut the, no, they're not the worst. They're the worst if you don't know how to deal with them. You have to deal, you have to learn the woman you're dealing with. Do yourself a favor. Talk shows on mute. Turn down what she says. Watch what she does. And women will tell you what they like. They like bad boys, pretty boys, for whatever reason. But here's the two things. Both guys are, are hella confident. Both lines, both guys are are arrogant got, got a lot of attitude borderline arrogant toxic masculinity infectious masculinity both don't really take any shit both have options and both have no problem checking abroad and both make women deliver something both of these guys do not just exchange you know their non-sexual time for a woman saying no you got to break yourself this is where you can listen to the pimping i know some of y'all don't want to hear it but the Pippin has something, if you've never actually, I'm going to give this one away. I don't know how many of you guys actually, how to know if you're select. I'll give you this. You know you're select if a woman actually spends real money on you. Often. Somebody, I don't mean she bought, she went to Starbucks and got you a coffee. I don't mean it was your birthday and she bought you a shirt. I mean, it's just Tuesday and she know you like some boots, so she bought them. Just because, first time this shit ever happened to me, I didn't know what the hell happened. That is a damn sure sign for being select. When women actually break themselves for you. Because women, by their nature, are, sex, I mean, are, so, are selfish creatures. So ask yourself a question. If you got a woman who's a seven, eight, nine. Most of us will never see a dime, but let's just throw them in there. Seven, eight, nine, ten, and the the inbox on Instagram, Facebook is full. The email is full. They they the text is full with dudes trying to <laughs> thirst after them. I drink your bath water. I'll pay your rent. I'll tie your shoes. And she's getting offers everywhere. You know, Cartier necklaces and you know Hermes bags and you know filling the fucking blank. You know this dinner, that trip, whatever. And she's actually breaking herself. Hey. I know you. I know you like uh, New York ooh, and I love the way you smell when you wear that. I thought I'd buy you a gallon of this shit. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll see you later. 
The last part was the fucking key. It wasn't a gallon of New York ood. It was, here's your shit. Because I know you like it. See you later. Because this ain't your appointed time. And actually leave. That is reserved for select guys. And here's the upside. You can have it too. You can have all the things that come along with being select if you're willing to do the work. And if you're not willing to do the work, cool. But understand, there is a whole, understand the woman that you dig, the women that you want, the women of your dreams, they have a bad boy or a pretty boy that they will go the extra mile for. But they expect you to drive miles for them. See, this is why I don't understand. See, self-improvement is <laughs> it's the biggest hack to the game because the other way you got to put in all the work, all the effort, all the non, you know, I got to give up all your non-sexual attention for her sexual attention. You got to. And then at the end of the day, you're getting transactional on everything with her. And as soon as she can find what she really wants, she's going to dump you. Versus if you do it the other way and you put yourself in, in demand, self-improvement is the best damn investment there is. So this is Patreon stuff. Yeah, well, you know, I had to do a follow up to this because some guys actually came out when I talked about, is there a case for marriage? And uh, and I meant what I said. Look here, man. As a well-rounded dude, you have to be able to hold opposing thoughts in your head and still be out of conversation. There is a case of marriage if you're looking to raise kids and do that. And I, this channel is, like I said, is a channel for men, but it's not a woman-hating thing. This is where women talk about this stuff. You heard it on a ladies' panel. So instead of sitting around as guys arguing and back and forth and all this vacillating, just, just look at what women do. Because here's the thing. The evidence often does not comport with our logic. You're like, why would they do that? I don't care why they did it. I mean, I do because I have to study this shit. But at the end of the day, the fact of the matter is they did it. What does Patrice O'Neill talk about? You can't blame them. They just do shit. And honestly, I'm going to just do shit. And honestly, I accepted that about female nature long ago before I even heard this because Patrice O'Neill's like, they, they like what they like. You're not going to win an argument on logic with an emotional creature. Why even try? And resenting the fact that they like what they like does what for you? Well, she shouldn't like a bad boy. She shouldn't like a pretty boy. <laughs> Okay, she shouldn't like him. She should like me better. Like the dude in my comment section. Fuck you, Kevin Samuels. She should like me for who I am. Point blank, period. <laughs> uh, when does that ever happen? Fighting and fucking. The old rules have always been there. There. The point in time in history where a lot of guys, this whole make marriage or relationships great again, I don't know where that time in history was. Look, man, go back to, <laughs> there's always been alpha fucks, beta bucks. There's always been select, non-select. There's always been pretty boy, bad boy, and the rest of the guys. It's always been there. The only thing is, as you get older, women get better at hiding it. I'm going to tell you some shit right now. The only thing that happens is we get older, women get better at hiding it. When they're younger, they're more wild and free and open. They care. They don't care to hide as much. But as they get older, they start seeing how, how society takes it. Women, women, there's shit that women will, will take to their grave. They will never, never tell anybody anything. Women's ability to deceive and keep secrets far exceed ours. They are some darcidious shit about this. It's actually admirable uh, if we could use it. Maybe it's good that we don't have that power. 
But women, when when it's all said and done, they will tell you, yeah, I married, I, I love my husband. I have sat with women who love their husband. Just coming back from her side, dude. I have seen it myself. Wasn't a husband, it was a boyfriend, but I'm sitting back. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's story time. Okay. A young calf was out there doing his, I was out there, I was out in Houston just running amok. I was in my 20s. And uh, there was this chick, we're going to call her Lisa. Lisa was, ah, oh, she was bad. Ooh, she was bad. Dudes wanted to holler at her, uh, but she had a thing for me. But I knew Lisa had a boyfriend in California. And see, as far as I'm concerned, I don't respect long distance relationships. See, my aunt told me this a long time ago. I grew up being this guy who'd be like, all right, uh, Joshua, you know, I like old girl, but she's dating, but she says she's dating Joshua. Or I think old girl's cute, but she's dating, she's. Oh, okay, Chesterfield. You don't have to do anything, dude. You don't, you don't have to go anywhere with a made up story. You can go bye bye. And I'm a huge Chesterfield. See, a nigga with the name like Chesterfield Archibald III, you know this dude's dick look like the Sahara. And he comes to <laughs> anyway. I like I like old girl, but she that's Chesterfield's girl. My aunt told me he's like, look here, son. You are single until you're married. A woman says she has a boyfriend, she's dating someone, a boyfriend, doesn't matter. You single. So if you wait until you find a woman, and she told me, you wait until you find a woman who's single, you always gonna be alone. Women always got somebody. This is a woman that told me that. She freed me up, cause I felt bad. I was like, what? He's like, yeah, you can't wait. He's like, look, man, you like pretty women. A pretty woman's always gonna have a boyfriend and several guys floating around her. You just gotta shoot your shot, let her pick. Because look, she may be the one for you. And if you if you don't shoot your shot, that means some other man could be with your woman. And I was like, you know what? She logically right. So I don't I don't I had no res I didn't respect long distance relationships. I wouldn't mess with anybody's wife cuz that's a vow thing. Uh, but boyfriend girlfriend if you if you don't bother you it don't bother me. So anyway, we in Houston, her boyfriend's in California. I'm like All right. You at my house. Apparently it ain't that damn serious. She's a sentient being. Hell. Anyway, we end up uh, getting it in. A, a long, prolonged, you know, it wasn't no going out and di diner and dance. No, it was just straight up, come over, we getting it in. It was the summertime in Houston. It was hot, sweaty, sticky. 12 play kind of sex shit going on. Actually, Shy was playing in the background. Shy in a portrait, uh, some damn uh, mint condition. Uh, this is back in the day of calling cards. And I remember after we would just, I mean, we would, I mean, we would get, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not gonna give you the details, but we did shit that I'm like, God damn, you nasty. <laughs> My girl. Woo! Yes, this kind of shit you'd only see on porns. I'm like, wow. And she was good too. I mean, she was really, really good. Really good. I was like, wow. Not only are you willing, you're good at this. Anyway, she can I use your phone? I'm like, all right. Got on my phone. Do 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 Back in the day of the calling cards, you know, you had to dial that 25-digit code, then the 10-digit phone number. Hello? Hey, baby. I'm sitting here, dick still glistening. It had all her... 
<laughs> I'm like, I'm standing outside. It's a summer breeze outside. Dick's still glistening. She, cause she had a pager and she got paged and she calls him up. Hey, baby. And I'm like, baby. But I was curious. I'm like, okay. Hey, uh, uh-huh. Yeah, I miss you too. Dude, I had never seen this before. Now understand, we just did some savage fucking. And this woman in under five minutes picked up the phone and went into a Hollywood performance. Yeah, honey. Uh-huh. Yeah, I do too. And I'm like, I listen to your big bro. I'm like, I believe what she's saying. I believe it. So I, part of me was like, this is fantastic. She's doing some fantastic acting. But then the savage part of me said, no, you didn't. What makes you think you can do this in front of me? So I politely put her ass back in the book. <laughs> She's on the phone. I walk over and I walk in front of her, still swinging. Next thing I know, she's Starts to pleasure me while she's on the phone. Mm -hmm. I'm like, but she's getting off on this. How do I know she's getting off on it? She's got one, she's got one, she got the phone here and a hand between her leg doing her thing. I'm like, okay. Understand, I'd never seen anything like this before, but I wanted to see where this goes. This is the whole thing about being open to exploration and everything else. You know, this is why the bad boy wins more often because bad boy will be like, whatever. I had to learn this stuff. So I'm like, she's on the phone with the dude, playing with herself. Like, okay. Then I'm like, he can't hear this because she wasn't making any slurping sounds or whatever. But I'm like, so I was like, well, if that's what you're going to do. And I figured maybe they get off the phone after a couple of minutes. Maybe she just, no, no, no. She had a full conversation with this dude. So I'm like, well, if you're going to go that far, let's see. And I wanted to see how far you, she was going to take it. So I was like, okay. Got her back up in the position. Arch that back. Face that direction. And I dropped this shit down off in her drawers. And I went, mm. I'm like, did you just, while this nigga on the phone? I'm telling you this so you understand something. I said I believed her when I heard her on the phone. If I was that, I think to myself, that dude believed everything she said. And I've been that dude on the other end of the line before because I had long distance relationships. I'm not telling you some shit I have not been. I've been punked. I've been cheated on. I've had this shit happen to me before. So don't be looking at me like I'm some damn villain. This happened to me too. And it's probably and it's happened to you too. If you think it ain't, you just don't know about it. If you believe what they're saying, if you're not her bad boy or her pretty boy, if you're not her imprint. So anyway, I'm just kind of sliding in there with shy in the background. Do, 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 do. Ooh, and H Town knocking boots was stuck out. I'm like, mm -hmm, and I was just kind of, but you know, after a while, because you're on the second session, you go longer too. But after a while, I'm like, I'm just kind of like, no, no, no. And she had this long hair back, and this is no weave stuff. So I wrapped up my do da do 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 do. And she, <laughs> anyway, long story short, okay. I got to call you back. All right, baby. I love you. I miss you. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Click. Uh-huh. Uh I'm like. <laughs> Lisa taught me a lot. She taught me a lot. But she taught me a lot that night. And I like after... Broke her off and did whatever. I said, Lisa, real talk. I had just broke up with my girlfriend um, who I really dug. So I, I was in that place where she was just, she was a great sex partner. And I was like, you know, for the, for the longest, 
I just didn't even, I was attracted to you and that sexual tension was there, but you had a man and I, I just got, and I was like, you know, but I just said, fuck it. You made yourself available and we decided to just do this thing. But you told him you love him. And she's like, I do. I love John. What? I love John. I love him. We're getting married. What? Yes, we're getting married. We're going to get married. He's coming up here next week and we're going ring shopping. I'm like, but we just have freaky circus PT Barnum kind of sex. He's like, yes. And I and I love every minute of it. But I love him. I love your sex, but I love him. I had a choice to make. I could have either just said that's an anomaly. She was crazy. She was lying. Or I could let my life. Or I could run, play the tapes back in my life and go back over the times that I've been John and realize that there was something different when I got around my woman. Something was quite off. It seemed like somebody didn't, like the three little, the you know, somebody's been sleeping in my bed. This this part, you know, see, dude, you if you've ever had a woman, if you've ever thought a woman she don't, she has, you know when somebody has been in your porridge. I've been on both sides. And I said, it's all in the game. I didn't make her do what she wanted to do. I didn't make her do anything. She's single. And look here, man. They are married. They are married. Last time I checked, they were married. John was freaking rich. I was not. John was a really solid dude from what she used to tell me. But this went on for months. Until I actually moved to another side of Houston and just kind of cut it off. But I had a lesson to learn. I've been on both sides of that phone, but I vowed I was like, never again. So I stopped having long distance relationships at that point. I stopped, if, I, if we're not close enough to where I can see you, you don't get a title. I, maybe date you from out of town. If you come in town, we get no titles. Because I've been played. Yes. And I remember what, I re when what made it set in for me is when I went back and played the tapes and I was like, okay. That's why I didn't get the phone call back. That's why she got the phone. So I started to really realize, I like, look here, man, women's sexual nature is just like us. She enjoyed that shit. She enjoyed, I was having my fun, but she was having more fun because she was on the phone with this dude, pleasuring this dude, and just in her own little, I'm like, wow. Who, who really was, take the story the way you want to. I was her pretty boy. I was her smooth. I was her. I was her smooth asshole. I talked to her. I talked the right shit to her. I wasn't John, who was all snugly kissing. And here's the thing. This woman would try to be like, "I I I love you. You're so cute." I'm like, "Bitch, shut up." I was never gonna. I was never gonna break frame. I never broke frame with her. I didn't want a relationship with her, but. Even at that, she was trying to get me to become John. What am I telling you? Bad boy, pretty boy. You can level up. You can become more select. But understand something. You cannot get mad at women for being what they are. If, you, <laughs> if you're not her upgrade, like Tony, like Tony Maceo says, no one's safe. Women love two kinds of guys, the pretty boy and the bad boy. Are you either one of them? If you're not, you got some work to do if you plan on dealing with them. The easiest thing you can do is go in there and get your body right. Drop down, do the push-ups, sit-ups, get your mask, get the back, get your arms, get your image together. I'm going to tell you, you can do more with your body and your and your fragrance and the way you smell. Watch the video I'm dropping uh, probably 10 a.m. in the morning. I got to get it edited. More you can do more with your because you, that's only so much you can do with your face. I mean, you can put on frames and have some be a beard or whatever, you know, but you can do more with your body. And then man, you really are gonna have to 
get your um get your get your game together. Even Coach Red Pill, shout out to Coach Red Pill. He dropped the video that I always talk about. He told guys to go take speech classes. You need to learn how to talk to people, speak in public. Some of you guys, man, I like you. As soon as you open your mouth, hey, how you doing? What? Mm -mm. Hi, how are you? Mm -mm. No, 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 no. There are no bad boys with a nasal voice like this. If you, you I'm, I'm a bad boy. No, you're not. I'm a pretty boy. No, you're not. Click this like. There it is right there. Click it. No, you're not. If you gotta walk around getting close up on the mic to get into your low into your lower vocal tone, that's what you do. <laughs> uh, all right, more on this. <laughs> ha, I didn't make the rules, man. I didn't make the rules. And a lot of times when you guys hear us talking about this shit and you don't like it. It's kind of like we're the horse with a dog whisperer, the horse whisperer. A lot Alan Alan is telling you stuff that he's learned or had to witness or was wrong. See Boogie, young Clinks, Clinks. What's your what's that boy name? Clinks. Is it Clink Scales? Clink Scales, Stefan, Clink. How are you? Is he here? Stefan here. I don't know. Is he here? Clink scales. Okay, clink scales. Okay. Sorry, bro. Look, man, you got guys out here putting you up on game. You know, shout out to Alfie Kingdom, uh, Book of Alphoronomy. We don't make women. We did not make the rules. We did not make female nature. We are just interpreting it for you. You can do whatever the fuck you want to do with it. Y'all can sit out here and debate the shit till cows come home. But you're not going to change it. You're damn sure not going to argue it, debate it. It's like, why fight it? Female nature is water flowing downhill. Go with the flow. There's somebody for everybody. Here's the thing: if you become a if you become a pretty boy, bad boy, goddamn. You be almost like Neo up in this month. If you're a pretty boy, bad boy, and actually get your your business acumen, your business sense together, and all this other kind of stuff, man, the more the more things in your the more arrows in your quiver, the better. Because when I was a pretty boy and I was still real, I told you about the summer I grew nine inches. Well, I was always the same weight from tenth grade till about twenty four years old. When I went from 174 pounds to 198 pounds and put on some muscle and had a chest and some tri I when my when I put on a masculine physique, I saw how women lost their shit. It was a it was it was as impactful as when I grew that nine inches. So I'm telling you what I've seen. I've grown from five foot one to five foot ten in three weeks in three months. Then in one summer. I went from 174, 176 to 198, 196 plus or minus. I was in the gym four hours a day, four days a week. Chest, tries, buys. I told you the story about the first time I took a jacket off and the black feminist at the call center. And she was just like, I had never been a muscular dude, but I'm going to tell you, women respond to that kind of shit. I didn't make them this way. When Alan talks about using those vocal tones, getting up in a woman's left ear, you know, talking about sliding his, you know, sliding his dick in her sweet, her sweet wet pussy. And the women respond, look, man, we didn't make them. We don't, we, we can just tell you what we've seen. And if you don't like it, you don't like it. But here's the thing, the smart ones out there will say, God damn, I got some, I got some cheat codes. Now I can, I can power up. Become one punch man. You know, what did he say? He became able to knock one out one punch by doing 100 push ups, 100 sit ups, and a brisk 10K run or some shit, whatever it is. Anyway, <laughs> that's the self improvement portion of it. All this red pill knowledge and all this other kind of shit is meaningless if you ain't doing it out there. Hashtag show your work, Negroes. If you're not doing it out there, if you've got nothing to show for it, What's the point of having all the knowledge? 
whether it's one, whether it's dating multiples, whatever. That's the point. These young Thundercats are going to be, whoo, man. We, this is going to be the summer of improvement, man. I want to see these young Thundercats leave high school or, or college and come back in the fall. Ooh, we to, to be a late teenager, to be a teenager right now with all this red pill information going on, man. Lord have mercy. The college campuses should not be a safe place to be a young Philly. Yip, 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 yipping around, yipping around the college campuses. Double, double bag it though, fellas. Don't be making no babies. The, the, Y'all should be running a serious, serious, serious level game on the yard while still doing every damn thing you needed to do. Hi, <laughs> that story was epic, right? All right. All right, guys. <laughs> That's it. I just had to get that out here. The bad boy, the pretty boy. Or uh, number or, or top tops for any woman. If you think I'm lying, if you don't if you don't agree, ask women in your life. Ask them. There's some women who like bad boys more. There's some women who like pretty boys more. You always, and here's the thing: you probably gonna hear more women say bad boys because pretty boys. You gonna hear, sometimes women don't like pretty boys. Uh, they say that. And as a guy who's always been a pretty boy, I've heard women. I don't like pretty boys. I don't like pretty boys. You know, he, he always dressed this way. And I don't want a guy who's gonna be in the mirror more than me. And I, pretty boys ain't in the mirror all that time. I'm not talking about no dainty femme metro thingy. No, 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 no. And that's not what I'm talking about. You can't you, I'm talking about the dudes that ultimately are just two sides of the asshole game. Asshole game works. You want to be a high value asshole. High value smooth asshole. Correction. High value, smooth asshole. Because we got a lot of high value assholes right now, but ain't the smooth ain't there. Smooth is the key. Butter. Smooth. Smooth. This is where you need to get your smooth. This is for the cool in you. Smooth. Big bro, out.